synthetic sites. Brainwashing. The ability to control a person's mind. To override their free will. Some say it's fiction. Others claim it's behind some of the most shocking crimes in modern history. Catch this, 1968. Presidential candidate Bobby Kennedy is shot dead. By a Palestinian named Sirhan Sirhan, who later claims he was hypnotized to carry out the killing. 1972. Teenager heiress Patty Hearst is kidnapped. Then goes on to commit crimes hand in hand with her abductors. At trial, her defense team claims she was brainwashed. What's the truth? Can the human mind actually be programmed? To find out, a team of leading experts and researchers conduct a groundbreaking experiment to take a mentally healthy, law-abiding individual and program them to shoot and kill a complete stranger. Overseeing the experiment is Dr. Cynthia Myersberg, who has conducted multiple studies on false memory implantation at Harvard University. Science has only just begun to understand how the brain works. And one of the things that we don't yet understand is whether or not it's possible to control someone else's mind. Dr. Mark Stokes studies neural pathways of decision making at Oxford University in England. What we're trying to do here is to strip away someone's sense of free will and see if they can carry out extreme acts. Can it be done? Well, they sure that it can. Dr. Jeff Kalashevsky works in supermax security prisons and hospitals for the criminally insane. He brings a real-world clinician's perspective to the study. Most psychologists believe that you can't make someone do something that they would not or could not do on their own. I'm not sure if that's true, but we're going to put that notion to the test. To accomplish their goal, they use one of the most controversial methods of mind control. Hypnosis. There's no clear understanding of what hypnosis is. The simplest definition is that it's a state of advanced relaxation where people are more open to commands or requests from others. Today, hypnosis is used as a form of therapy and helping to treat things like pain, addictions, or phobias. The hypnosis has a tremendous power to heal and to do good, but it has to be respected. Can hypnosis turn one of these people into a killer? Today we're going to do a few different, um, kind of like what we might call exercises, okay? Just to kind of test your focus and concentration. The experts call on certified hypnotherapist Tom Silver to perform, but like you said, this is the experiment. But like you said, there are many different levels of those states of hypnosis. Tom has treated thousands of patients in over 20 countries. We are doing interactive therapy. He's been called in by law enforcement to conduct hypnotic interrogation and was recruited by the Taiwanese Secret Service to help uncover an international arms trading scandal, a service only recently declassified. Seems to work. Close your eyes, please. The unexpected physical jolt overstimulates 
the person's mind, and then they escape with the hypnosis, kind of like the fight and flight mechanism. Now imagine your eyes looking up towards the top of your head to leave your eyelids relaxed. And now seven. So there's no great scientific consensus of how hypnotism actually works, but some research suggests that hypnosis might be associated with suppression of higher brain areas that are responsible for monitoring behavior, uh, cognitive control, and uh, sense of awareness. We will not depict Tom's full induction process. Closing, closing, you won't fall. In some countries like the UK or Australia, you can't show people being hypnotized because of Irish broadcast regulations. As they touch you on your shoulder, let your head get a little heavier dropping down. This is to prevent viewers from being accidentally hypnotized. The sound of my voice is hypnotizing you more and more deeply with each and every exhale. After five minutes, most subjects enter a hypnotic trance. Once the subjects are under, I'm going to evaluate your depth of hypnosis by using the Stanford Hypnotic Susceptibility Scale. The Stanford Scale works by giving hypnotized subjects a series of progressively difficult commands. The commands range from simple hand movements all the way to the experience of having full hallucinations. I touch you on your forehead. I want to just erase your memory temporarily. When I ask you your name, you've forgotten your name. Your eyes open. My name's Tom. What was your name? Tom. When I do the amnesia exercise, it's a challenge. I'm going to tell them, my name is Tom. What is your name? And then I'm going to watch their reactions. I want to see anxiety on their face. I want to see confusion on their face. What was your name? Tom. What's your name? Hey, drop it now. Drop it now, please. Amnesia is the absence of memory. That's what amnesia is. So people wonder, well, how can that happen, or what is that? Sometimes when we're thinking about memory, it's almost like we're playing back a film. But we're not really. We're taking little bits and pieces, and we're putting them together, and our brains do this for us in an almost seamless way. Usually, our brains do a very good job. One theory is that hypnosis might interrupt this process. Head drop it down, please. Stay right there, you won't fall. Now, for the most difficult command. An emotional hallucination. In a moment, I'm going to have you open your eyes. I'm going to count from one counting upwards. Each number that I count upwards, you're going to get more and more angry. One, two, three. Look at the scowls. Four, five, six. You know, one thing that's interesting about an emotion like anger is people express anger in different ways. Some people become quiet. Some people become verbal. Nine. <laughs> ten. Eleven. And the star has me off, and I don't get pissed off very easily. So you see, just treat people the way you expect to be treated. This is not right. Please stop. Who way you expect to be treated? Five. Can we zone in on the guy in the white? Look at the expression on his face. What strikes me about him, look at his breathing. He's got some deep breaths, sort of trying to keep himself calm. You're making a fist. How do you feel right now? I'm pleasing totally relaxed. I'm pleasing totally relaxed. Stiffer, but not everyone responds to Tom's suggestion. How do you feel? I'm taking it off. She's not taking it off. She's not taking it off. his evaluations. Who's hypnotized? Who's not? And who's playing along? He's categorizing the people on how susceptible he believes they are mm -hmm. for hypnosis. A one or two indicates the subject isn't taking. A four or five indicates they're very receptive. I'm looking at physiological changes occurring. I'm looking at their gaze, their focus on the test, the dilation or the watering of the pupil. I'm looking for the twitching of the eyelids, what we call rapid eye movement. I want to see the breathing get slower. I'm also looking for the physical body to become relaxed, the jaw to become relaxed. On the count of five, you'll open your eyes for me. Really, really good. One, two, three, four, five. Pull it open. Thanks so much, folks. Okay. Thank you.